starts right now. We begin tonight with a live look from Sky 12 tonight flying over Travis Park downtown. It is a bit difficult to make out in this shot, but there is a small group of protesters in that park tonight. It was a much different scene downtown several hours ago. This is a Sky 12 shot from earlier when hundreds of protesters marched near the Bear County Courthouse. Their destination, Public Safety Headquarters. Our Dylan Collier brings us that report in just a few minutes. But first, we love our street. That's what some business owners in the downtown area had to say following vandalism that happened during last Saturday's protests. Several businesses along Broadway were damaged after peaceful protests turn violent. The night team's Stephen Cavazos is live right now along Broadway in Houston with some measures businesses are now taking. Stephen? Tim, Courtney, will businesses here say that they were worried what tonight could possibly bring? In fact, take a look over here. Several businesses like Ant Alamo Antique Mall have boarded up the windows here, but that's not the only safety measure that they're taking. Now, earlier today, several gun toting groups were walking here along Broadway. In fact, one group called Old Ragged First told us that they were out in the area last weekend when things took a turn and businesses here were vandalized. Now, the business owner of Alamo Antique says they reached out to her and asked her if she felt she needed protection this weekend. Here's what she had to say about keeping her business safe. And I'm just here about protecting our block. Nothing else but to save our block. We love our block and we hurt, work hard for our businesses. And for someone to take it away from us in a second, it's just not right. Now, the group said that they had been communicating with SCPD who were in the area also patrolling this particular spot. Now, the group has left right now because the business owner did tell us she let them know she felt safe. We actually spoke to those uh, that group. We'll have a live report coming up in the next 30 minutes. Back to you. Check out. Check back in with you soon, Stephen. Thank you. Hundreds of people gathered peacefully outside public safety headquarters this afternoon. The night team's Dylan, Dylan Collier has more on the rapidly organizing plan to increase police accountability here in San Antonio. Before they walked through downtown streets, around 300 demonstrators observed a moment of silence for 8 minutes 46 seconds. The same amount of time a now fired Minneapolis police officer is accused of kneeling on George Floyd's neck. San Antonio city officials announced they lifted a curfew in the central business district just as protest leaders encouraged everyone to not let anything take away from their message. I'm making sure that they on TV right now know that we are not here to create violence. This is what democracy looks like. After the energetic crowd traveled past City Hall in the Justice Center, it regrouped at public safety headquarters. Several speakers talked about the need to defund the San Antonio Police Department, listing specific dates coming up when they can be heard by city leaders, leaders that protesters continue to learn more and more about. You know how to give the names, so when you address them, you already read them. And that protest broke apart just after six o'clock. There is one currently going on behind us here at Travis Park. It's a much smaller gathering. That one has also been peaceful. Now these budget sessions are scheduled to begin in August and will run through early September. Reporting live downtown, Dylan Collier, your case at 12 news. Thank you, Dylan. It is worth noting tonight. If you or someone you know has marched or participated in any way in protest, the CDC recommends getting tested for COVID-19. More specifically, they recommend getting tested within three to seven days of participating. The CDC director also pointed to the use of tear gas by police as something which could actually help the virus spread because it causes people to cough. Another reminder, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is still in great need of blood to prevent a shortage amid the pandemic. And now the center is providing free antibody testing for all blood donors throughout the whole summer. The free tests begin on Monday and last through August 31st. If you want to donate blood or receive the antibody test, you have to make an appointment first. To do that, you can visit SouthTexasBlood.org for more information. We also have a link to get you there at KSAT.com. And that brings us to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here locally. Metro Health's COVID-19 surveillance dashboard tonight showing a big spike for Bear County. There are now 3,290 confirmed cases, 147 of those, 47 of those being new today. No new additional deaths were reported. That number still stands at 78. More concerning, though, numbers coming from those hospitalized locally. 205 patients are in the ICU tonight, 88 of those on ventilators. 
To other news now, police say a suspect is still at large after crashing their vehicle into a north side home and running away. That suspect left behind all their information, which is now in police custody. The crash also caused that home to catch fire, and now the family living there is stuck cleaning up the damage. The night team's Jaffney Gray with how this crash this morning caught a mother and her son off guard. My first question was, are you kidding me? And he was like, no, mom, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be calling you at 4 a.m. Jennifer Ashley was caught by surprise when her son, Alex Ashley, called saying a car crashed into their home here in the 7900 block of Briar Ridge Drive near Pine Brook Drive. Alex was sound asleep. I hear this loud bang kind of startled me, woke me up a little bit. I uh, started to smell some smoke after a couple minutes. Um, noticed that things were getting a little, little stuffy in the house. Um, and then all of a sudden I hear a lot of bangs on my door. Uh, it was my neighbors who actually came by there like, hey, I don't know if you know this, but there's something on fire in your backyard. Alex says at first he thought he was dreaming, but sure enough, a car had crashed through the fence into their home where it then burst into flames. He made it out of the home uninjured and no other injuries were reported. However, that could have been a different story if Jennifer was actually home. There is a two by four that went through the bedroom window through the blinds and into my headboard, about two feet above where I would have otherwise been sleeping. The family spent the afternoon cleaning up the damage left behind from the fire and the crashed car. Both Jennifer and Alex had this to say to the suspects still at large. Unfortunate that they felt like they couldn't take responsibility for their actions, um, but more than anything, we'd just like to know if they're okay. Obviously something was going on. Um, Whatever it was, you know, I just I hope that they're okay. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Around Texas tonight, three people have been arrested for looting, burglarizing, and damaging property at a Target in Austin. That's according to the FBI, who says the three suspects are known members of the anti-government group Antifa. The group, uh, the crimes happened back on May 31st at the Target on North I-35 in Capitol Plaza. 27-year-old Lisa Hogan, 22-year-old. Samuel Miller and 23 year old Sky Elder, all from Austin, are now facing charges ranging from riot and burglary of a building to criminal mischief and burglary. FBI officials say the trio was part of a group of about 20 people who ripped plywood from in front of the doors, shattered the glass on those doors, and then entered the store. One in the group, Hogan, also allegedly encouraged others to join in via Facebook Live. A traffic change on the north side to tell you about. You're taking a look at Sky 12 video from this afternoon of Highway 281 just north of 1604. You're looking at southbound frontage lanes having transitioned traffic onto the newly constructed southbound lanes of 281. The lanes are part of the long gestating Highway 281 expansion project, which started in 2018. Taking a look outside the live cam this evening. A nice night here in the Alamo City. Clear skies and our downtown lights are sparkling tonight. It is warm though and of course very muggy outside this evening. Uh, today a fairly seasonable day. Our high temperature not too far removed from the average this time of year. We made it up to 93 this afternoon. But you notice the record for today's date is 101. We'll start to inch closer to that in the next few days as temperatures continue to climb. Your Sunday afternoon looking at high temperatures. More of us in the upper 90s tomorrow. Another hot and humid day. Another good day to stay by the pool. I'll let you know when we'll see those temperatures peak and if we've got any rain in the forecast coming up in just a bit. Tim. Thank you, Katie. Turning now to the race for the White House, Joe Biden has officially earned enough delegates to secure the Democratic nomination for president. The former vice president clinched the nomination after Tuesday's presidential primaries. Voters in seven states and Washington, D.C. gave Biden enough support to reach the delegate threshold. Biden needed 1,991. CNN projects he currently has 1,992. He will officially receive the nomination at the party's convention in August. Democratic candidates in the race for a U.S. Senate seat getting a chance to debate the issues live tonight here on KSAT 12. Air Force combat veteran M.J. Hagar and State Senator Royce West are vying for the nomination. The winner will face incumbent Republican Senator John Cornyn in November. The topics tonight included a push for another stimulus check, health care, and the changes needed to appease protesters. 
I support Campaign Zero, things like uh, police being more representative of the communities that they're policing, community leaders having a voice, but we really have to go beyond that. It really needs to be a, a full systemic reform. We also have to look at education, we have to look at health and human services, we have to look at economic development, specifically jobs for African Americans, which right now, unemployment amongst African Americans is, is right at about 17 percent. The primary runoff election is scheduled for July 14th. Still ahead on the night beat, peaceful protests stretch across the nation today as the family of George Floyd attend a special memorial near his hometown in North Carolina. We'll take you there. Peaceful protests across the country today to demand change after the killing of George Floyd. Meantime, his loved ones said their goodbyes at a special memorial in his honor. ABC's Rena Roy has a story. A loud cry heard coast to coast in San Francisco, where thousands marched across the Golden Gate Bridge, stopping traffic to New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and so many cities in between. Ain't no power like the power of the people, because the power of the people don't stop. Calls for change in hopes of ending police brutality and racial injustice. Many taking that strong message directly to the White House. Just steps away, marching over a new mural ordered by the D.C. mayor and a plaza fittingly renamed. The more people that are here means the more people that realize this affects everybody. Many hoping this is a learning lesson for the next generation. This is part of history and they need to learn that History takes hard work. Meanwhile, friends, family, and complete strangers gathered at this church in the small town of Rayford, North Carolina, to mourn the tragedy that helped propel this movement. Not only did we lose a family member, but y'all watched as well. I'm praying for us all, and I hope we all get better. A memorial for George Floyd in his birthplace, nearly two weeks after he died in police custody. Former police officer Derek Chauvin charged in his death. I feel so sad because it very well could have been my brother, my son, my uncle, any of those. I saw my people. I, you know, he's, he's one of us. The Floyd family finding solace in the belief that his life served a higher purpose. I feel like God chose him for a reason, that he hand selected my brother because he had worked for him. Absolutely. You know, he had a job for him and he called him home and so he felt that his death is not in vain. Floyd will be laid to rest in Houston on Tuesday. Meantime, former officer Chauvin is expected to face a judge for the first time on Monday on second degree murder charges. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. It was so hot today and you know we were saying how the, the rain chances had lasted week, two weeks in a row and yeah. now I'm feeling like I miss that. We're paying for it now. <laughs> Can they come back? Yeah, today was the first day I got, I got into my car and I, I was like, oh, yeah, we're here. Me Summer. too. Me Can't too. avoid it any longer. It's happening. Yeah, it's here. It was hot out there today. 93 in San Antonio, but out in Del Rio. You did make it up to the century mark this afternoon. So most of us in the mid 90s on this Saturday across the state. Very hot as well. 100 up in San Angelo, 98 in Dallas, 93 in the Panhandle in Lubbock and mainly a rain free day across the state. Limited cloud cover as well. But in far east Texas, there were a few showers today, even as close uh, as the Houston area and a lucky few counties in our viewing area are seeing some shower activity right now. These were some showers that popped up in Far East Texas and then have been moving to the southwest this evening. So Gonzalez County, Lavaca County, a little bit of shower activity moving on through. Gonzalez looks like some healthy rain could move through the south part of town right there. Hallettsville, a little bit of light to moderate rain up 77 here uh, and along Highway 90. These showers will continue to move down to the southwest. So if you're in DeWitt County, maybe even a portion of Wilson County over the next hour or so, you may get a little bit of rain out of these showers, but as time goes on, I think the shower activity will continue to fizzle out, and that is what our is what our high resolution futurecast model is picking up on. So, a few lucky folks off well to the east of 35. A little bit of rain maybe over the next hour or so. Otherwise, that'll be it. It will be a rain-free and mostly clear night across South Texas. So, we'll start you off first thing in the morning with a lot of sun. And that helps to warm us up again tomorrow afternoon. A few degrees warmer tomorrow than it was today. We've got a north northeast wind because we'll start to be on the back side, the western side of tropical storm crystal balls circulation, but our humidity should still 
stay fairly elevated. It's definitely not going to feel dry out there. So heat index at times tomorrow afternoon could approach 100 degrees here in San Antonio, even higher than that down on the coastal bend. So we'll keep our dew points in the 60s here into the early part of next week. But you notice a nice little drop off into the 50s. Now, this isn't going to be the dry air that we get behind those fall cool fronts or anything like that, but that'll take us out of humid territory down into Pleasant. So even though it will be warm, we'll get some slightly drier air arriving by the middle of next week, and that's because of what's going on in the western U.S. So kind of two things steering our weather over the next few days. Crystal ball in the Gulf of Mexico and then this dip in the jet stream that will eventually bring a cool front through. So I want to walk you through the next few days. We've got crystal ball making landfall tomorrow afternoon sometime in the late afternoon, early evening along the Louisiana Gulf Coast. We've got sinking air on the west side of that tropical system. That's going to help to keep things very hot for us here in South Texas. Unseasonably hot, pushing triple digits as we get into Monday and Tuesday. Then here comes a front out of the western U.S. This is going to be mainly a Pacific cool front. So I actually think this is going to help to pulse our temperatures up one more day Tuesday afternoon as this front comes in, something called compressional heating will happen and that'll keep us in the triple digits again Tuesday, despite the arrival of this frontal boundary. But like what you saw on our dew points, that frontal boundary will help to usher in some slightly drier air by the middle of the week. But you'll notice we're still in the 90s, but it just won't be quite as muggy. Looks like Wednesday into the back half of next week. So that's a little bit of good news. That's about the only good news I have for you here. No chance of rain in the forecast over the short term. Things are looking just hot and sunny, but coming up next half hour, we've got some incredible video of Tropical Storm Cristobal. We're going to talk more about that system coming up next half hour. Guys, all I can focus on is triple digits, but I feel like Katie was spinning us there. <laughs> 100 degree days. All right, uh, Coach Pop has never been shy about sharing his opinion on current affairs. No, and the Spurs recently started a video um, thing called Spurs Voices. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm black. A podcast? Yeah, a video? just a video uh, talking wow. about where it gives members of the Spurs organization their voice yeah. to talk about how racism has affected them. And it's not just the players, it's also just regular staffers. But coming up, Coach Pop talks about the death of George Floyd. Plus, the Dallas Cowboys posted a video to combat social injustice. Coming up. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich delivered a powerful and emotional speech about racism in America while speaking out on the killing of George Floyd. In response to what's going on, the Silver and Black started a video series called Spurs Voices, allowing the Spurs to address racism in the country. Pop has a long tradition of speaking out on important issues and became emotional when talking about the manner in which Floyd was killed. It's almost in a strange, counterintuitive sort of way the best teaching moment of this most recent tragedy, I think, was the look on the officer's face. For white people to see how nonchalant, how casual, how just every day going about his job, so much so that he could just put his left hand in his pocket, wriggle his knee around a little bit to teach this person some sort of a lesson. And it was his right and his duty to do it in his mind. I don't know. I think I'm just embarrassed as a white person to know that that can happen, uh, to actually watch a lynching. Pop closed his three minute and 23 second video saying, quote, our country is in trouble and the basic reason is race, end quote. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys released a video called Protest to Progress. This video statement, the first in a series that will be released by the Cowboys, reflects the organization's statement regarding the recent tragedies in our country while also disclosing interactions between the team, its players, and community leaders, including law enforcement, judicial figures, social service leaders, and Dallas city attorneys. Here's 30 seconds of that two-minute clip. Nobody hates a bad cop worse than all of us good cops. The distrust is there for a number of reasons, and it's more than just a stereotype. It's been our history. You gotta go around me. If we come together, if we see our neighbors as we see ourselves, and we all believe in helping one another, that social justice 
is possible. And it's not only possible in our communities, but it's possible across our country. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said Friday the league should have listened to players earlier about racism concerns in response to NFL players calling on the league to condemn racism and support its black players. Goodell posted a video to the NFL social media on Friday, and here's part of what he said. We, the National Football League, condemn racism and the systematic oppression of black people. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. We, the National Football League, believe black lives matter. I personally protest with you and want to be part of the much needed change in this country. New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft is pledging $1 million to promote social justice. On Friday, social media posts said the Kraft family will donate $100,000 a month over the next 10 months. They want to support local grassroots groups that are fighting for equality, working to end systemic racism and creating meaningful change. The organizations are being chosen in collaboration with the Patriots players. The Kraft organization says its eyes, ears and hearts are open to listen and to learn. And coming up later in sports, San Antonio boxer Joshua Franco is getting ready to challenge for a world title, and I can't wait. I look forward to it. Good stuff in this block. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate it. one for the books, Larry, for sure. Two Buffalo, New York officers accused of shoving a 75-year-old man to the ground during protests are now facing charges. A closer look at the case next on the Night Beat. This was the scene today at the newly renamed Black Lives Matter Plaza in Washington, D.C. Thousands turning out in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Yesterday, the words Black Lives Matter were painted boldly across two blocks of 16th Street. The work was contracted by D.C.'s mayor. Washington has been the site of more than a week's worth of protests in response to the death of George Floyd. And it is important to note the Black Lives Matter movement is not specific to the United States. Protesters have been gathering in cities across the world this week, united against racism and police brutality. This video was taken in London's Parliament Square today, where yet again thousands have turned out with signs. Wow. And take a look at this video from Brisbane, Australia. Indigenous tribe members perform the ceremonial haka dance to show their support during a rally and in front of Sydney's town hall protests organized by Aboriginal rights groups stand in solidarity with protests right here in the U.S. Meanwhile two po Buffalo police officers captured on video pushing and shoving a 75 year old protester to the ground have been arraigned on assault charges. This incident in Buffalo comes amid increased scrutiny of law enforcement tactics sparked by the death of George Floyd. Here's ABC's Dave Packer with the details. The two Buffalo police officers suspended after this disturbing incident on Thursday, making their first court appearance today. 39-year-old Aaron Turgalski and 32-year-old Robert McCabe were arraigned on one count of assault in the second degree, a Class D felony. The officers were seen shoving a 75-year-old protester, Martin Gugino, to the ground. The injured man lying motionless and bleeding from his ear as protesters called for help. He's now in serious but stable condition. The district attorney says he's not choosing sides. He's prosecuting those he believes broke the law. There's no sides here that I'm choosing. I'm not on anyone's side. I'm on this country's side. That's whose side I'm on. I'm on justice's side. And all I'm doing is my job. The two officers were suspended immediately, prompting the remaining 57 members of the Buffalo Police Emergency Response Team to resign from the unit in protest of those suspensions. Governor Cuomo calling what was on that video horrendous and disgusting. If there's something else that I didn't see or if what I saw was not correct, then tell me. Otherwise, do justice. And that's what the mayor did, and that's what the DA did. And good for them. Good for them. Turgalski and McCabe were released on their own recognizance and are due back in court in July. Across the country, other incidents of alleged police violence are now coming to light. In Tacoma, Washington, authorities are investigating these videos showing the violent takedown of Manuel Ellis in March. His death now ruled a homicide. The 33-year-old reportedly yelling at one point, I can't breathe, before police say they tried to help him and called medics. We want answers. No more talking.
Tacoma's mayor calling for those officers to be fired and prosecuted. Tacoma's police union firing back at the mayor in a letter titled, Now is the time for facts, not theatrics, saying the mayor passed judgment on the four officers without an ounce of evidence. Dave Packer, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, a group who calls themselves the Old Ragged First say following last weekend's vandalism, they were tasked by some business owners with protecting downtown. Yeah, the night team Stephen Cavazos is live downtown tonight with what the group has to say about the request. Well, they weren't the only group out here, Tim Cordy. In fact, there were several other groups out here as well, but they say they want people to know that their firearms act as visual deterrents. Now, again, they're no longer in the area, but say that they'll come back as needed. Now, the group says that they were in the area last week when businesses were broken into and vandalized. That's when they reached out to some of the business owners and offered their help. Now, one of the members says that the group was one of the first militias in Texas, but their main mission is to keep people and property safe. One of the members we spoke to says they do want to avoid any conflict. We are a visual deterrent, first and utmost. When you see us and you want to come over here and break into this business, you've got some issues. Some, you're not in your right mind if you want to come over here and destroy what this lady's worked for. Now, they do say if they spot a problem in the future, they will notify SAPD first. Now, we want to give you a bigger picture of what the downtown here on Broadway is looking like. Several of the businesses down here still have their windows boarded up. In fact, we spotted a few business owners out here that say that while they support the Black Lives Matter movement, they still want to keep their property safe. Tim Courtney. Thank you, Stephen. After the break, we're turning back to coronavirus coverage. We'll look at more affordable ways to get medications for people who have lost their jobs or insurance. Well, COVID-19 hasn't just caused millions of people to lose their jobs. They've also lost their health insurance, and that can make it really difficult to avoid prescription medications. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks at ways to get affordable and sometimes even free medication without having insurance. No job, no paycheck. That's a reality for millions of Americans now facing tough questions. Pretty hard, you know, not knowing where my food is going to come from, um, how I'm going to pay for my medicine. For Dustin Quinn and others laid off, there is help out there for getting prescription medications. Many people may not know this, but there are multiple ways that you can actually get prescription medications at a low and affordable price or even for free. First, ask your pharmacist about discounts or hardship programs offered by the drug manufacturers or even the pharmacy itself. A lot of pharmacies participate in a federal program called 340B. That allows them to partner with certain community health centers that offer significantly discounted drugs to people in need. If you strike out at your pharmacy, look at enrolling in a drug company's program. Almost all pharmaceutical manufacturers have programs to help people without insurance who qualify, to help people get the medication they need at no charge. As for Dustin, she got her meds by signing up for Medicaid. Before Medicaid, I would have paid uh, well over $100. I'm not for sure the exact amount, but well over 100 with Medicaid, they pay all of it besides a $2 copay. Of course, buying generics can be a huge money saver. Pharmacies like Walmart and HEB have a long list of common generics for $4 for a 30-day supply. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Outside with live cam, 84 degrees here in San Antonio. Pretty nice night, a little warm and muggy, but nothing we can't handle. And we've got clear skies over South Texas this evening. It's a good 10 degrees cooler up in the Hill Country right now. 74 in Kerrville, 75 in Fredericksburg. We'll see temperatures uh, drop down uh, about 10 more degrees from where they are right now here in San Antonio to the mid 70s tomorrow morning. Upper 60s in the Hill Country under clear skies. And tomorrow afternoon, very similar to today, hot and sunny with high temperatures mid to upper 90s here in San Antonio, triple digits off to the west. We're going to turn our attention to the tropics coming up next. More on Tropical Storm Crystal Ball in just a few minutes. Take a look at this video. The National Weather Service's Hurricane Hunters flew into Tropical Storm Crystal Ball today to better gauge its strength. They measured Crystal Ball having sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. And it's only expected to continue to strengthen as it moves through the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, headed for Louisiana. Compared to some of the storms they fly into, Katie, this is a uh, 
walk in the park, so to speak, for these guys. <laughs> yes, it is right now. Yeah, maybe not so bumpy as right. <laughs> some of those uh, major hurricanes. Yeah, I'm glad we have those resources from NOAA and the Air Force Reserve. Uh, both of those, uh, both of those groups fly into these tropical systems. They were actually um, both flying through Crystal Ball today. Here is the that video you were just looking at. Here is the actual track that the NOAA Hurricane Hunters took today, leaving Florida uh, on their and then uh, heading back earlier this evening. And it looks like they found uh, surface pressure, low surface pressure of 990 millibars. Uh, so it's cool that we can kind of plot this on here for you, the plane that they use and everything like that. Very important work that the hurricane hunters do for us. So crystal ball at this moment, maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. That is up from 40 miles per hour this time last night. Movement is to the north at about 12 miles per hour. And we're going to talk about where crystal ball is expected to make landfall tomorrow but several states away from where landfall is expected. Big impacts from the outer bands of crystal ball today in Florida. Several severe weather reports all the way from the Florida panhandle. Some wind there, a very heavy rain reports, wind damage trees down there. Uh, but the big thing here and what is incredible to see on Twitter, the video that was posted was the report of a large tornado uh, and Orlando here right along four is kind of hidden by these icons. There were several tornado reports from around the Orlando area today, and it was captured on video. This was a large tornado uh, from one of these outer bands moving through. So this is a great example of why Many times with tropical systems, the biggest impacts, especially in terms of wind and storm surge, can be near the center of the circulation, the center of low pressure, or where these systems make landfall. But look at these outer bands that extend all the way into Florida, several states away, big time impacts from the outer bands of tropical storm Cristobal. So there it is sitting centralized in the central Gulf of Mexico, but those outer bands extend all the way into Florida. It'll continue its northward motion tomorrow. Landfall is expected along the Louisiana Gulf Coast sometime tomorrow evening. It looks like before 7 p.m. tomorrow uh, landfall will happen there along the Louisiana Gulf Coast, and then the system will continue to drift off to the north kind of hugging the Mississippi River as we get into Monday and Tuesday of this week. Highest rainfall totals will likely be on the eastern side of this system. That's not a surprise. That's very typical with tropical systems uh, down in far south Louisiana and uh, excuse me, Mississippi and Alabama. They're looking at maybe between six and ten inches of rain, but high rainfall totals closer to five inches of rain extend all the way into a portion of Arkansas. And since we are on the western side of Cristobal, things are going to be staying sunny and hot for us. 96 tomorrow, but as we get some sinking air on the western side of that system, our temperatures will bump up to 100 Monday, close to 104. That's pushing record high territory on Tuesday, and then things will come down a bit as we get into the middle part of next week. But bottom line, staying hot in the short term. I want to take another look at Doppler radar because we do have a few of those showers that made it into our easternmost counties from far east Texas earlier today. So Lavaca County. Gonzales County, even DeWitt County have got a little bit of shower activity moving off to the southwest there. Uh, looks like rain has uh, is moving just past the Highway 90 corridor there. Uh, Hallettsville looks like the heaviest rain is uh, just off to the west of you there between Gonzales and Hallettsville. And again, this is going to continue uh, to move down to the southwest. So if you're in DeWitt County, could get another shower here in the next hour. But that shower activity is expected to continue to fizzle out and we'll stay rain free tonight in the overnight hour. So clear sky 74 tomorrow morning up to 96 tomorrow afternoon. Plenty of sunshine again on your Sunday and then getting even hotter early next week, pushing record high temperatures Monday and Tuesday and staying hot and sunny in the short term here. Guys, Ooh, hydration. Yeah, it's key. It's already starting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go hibernate until October. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave me here alone to deal I'll with the heat. I'll Saturdays. I'll Saturdays. be here for you. Okay, thank you, Larry. Larry, you're talking boxing. <laughs> yes, uh, we know San Antonio has a great history of boxing, and San Antonio boxer Joshua Franco is adding to that history. He is getting ready to fight for the WBA Super Flyweight Belt and racing. Another series is back. IndyCar taking on TMS tonight. Coming up. Two weeks after NASCAR returned to live racing, IndyCar follows suit in the Lone Star State and Big Board Sports. 
Cornerstone Christian quarterback Lucas Cooley is a hardworking young man. We caught up with Lucas and some of his football teammates this week going through some drills at the school. They were pushing sleds 2,500 yards, testing the Warriors' mental toughness. Can they dig down deep mentally when it's needed the most? Head football coach John Bachman praised Cooley's work ethic. If you ever worried about a kid overtraining, I mean, if that was really a legitimate worry, that's what you would worry about with him. But then you realize what position he plays on our team. He's a quarterback. And if there was a one position on the field where you want them to be uh, next level dedicated, obviously it's the quarterback. And what, what I appreciate about him is right now there's no balls. We're not throwing. We're not catching. But he's the leader of our team, and not just the offense, the defense. And special teams and everything that we mix in and this is a perfect example to show who he really is. I like to lead by example because I feel like if I'm not leading, if I'm not working hardest out of the whole team, how can I expect anybody else to want to follow me or want to listen to me when I call a play or when I change an audible? How can I expect them to trust me when the game's on the line? And you know, that's just been my mindset from day one, whether that's, you know, little league, middle school, high school, and all the way up until, you know, I'm in the business world. I still want to be the best at whatever I can do. And, uh, you know, you being the best makes other people follow you. And that's what that's what I always want to try and do. San Antonio boxer Joshua Franco is getting ready for the biggest fight of his pro career. It's been almost five months since he won by technical knockout in the Alamo Dome. Now he's in Riverside, California, training for his chance to win a championship belt. Franco will fight Australia's Andrew Maloney for Maloney's WBA World Super Flyweight title belt. Here's what Franco told KSAT about his upcoming fight. He's just a, a tough, skilled guy. Um, he comes to fight, you know, um, he's, he's, he's undefeated. So, you know, he, he's, he's going to try to keep that, that all on his record, but it's really exciting. You know, I just work can't even describe how excited I am. You know, I'm training very hard, pushing myself to the limit. And, you know, I, I know I want that world title. I've been working hard for it. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving that ring without, without the belt. The fight will go down at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, June 23rd, and no fans will be allowed. IndyCar dropped the green flag on its season today at Texas Motor Speedway nearly three months after COVID-19 shut it down. Driver helmets were sanitized in a Sandy Box personal sanitizer while cars went through technical inspection. This is to make sure there are no contaminants in contact with the drivers when they get in the car. And those entering the track went through a screening process, which included questions and a temperature check. No fans, no fans allowed a TMS reigning IndyCar Series champion and defending Texas Motor Speedway winner Josef Newgarden picked up the pole for tonight's Genesis 300. Late in the race, Felix Rosenquist running second behind teammate Scott Dixon laps James Hinchcliffe who appears to drift up touching Rosenquist spinning him into the wall with 10 laps to go bringing out a caution. Ouch. The green flag came out with three laps to go and Scott Dixon grabs the checkered flag in Fort Worth, opening the IndyCar season with a dominating victory. And I'll make a spare tire for that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. A somber end tonight to the night beat as we observe the 76th anniversary of D-Day. On this day in 1944, Allied troops invaded Normandy, France to fight Nazi Germany in World War II. It was the largest land and water invasion in history and a major turning point in the war. More than 160,000 troops, 13,000 aircraft and 5,000 ships took part in the operation. It is estimated approximately 10,000 Allied soldiers were either killed, wounded, or went missing in action. More than 6,600 of them were Americans. I say it every time we do a story about World War II. If you've got a family member that was there, they're still alive, get their story now before mm -hmm. they're not with us so you have that for your family to pass on. Absolutely. Thank them for their service. Absolutely. Another hot sunny day tomorrow. Temperatures continue to trend upward, peaking on Tuesday. It'll still be hot the back half of next week, but I hope we'll get a little break with the humidity Wednesday into Thursday behind a dry, cool front. Dry. Dry. That means hot. <laughs> That's all of our time tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to catch Good Morning San Antonio tomorrow starting at 6. Have a great night.